So my elk hunting tactic is really just to shadow bulls as they're bugling and just try to cut them off as they're going to their bed. Uh, it's worked pretty well. It also allows me to get in tight on herd bulls. I've often found that herd bulls are very uncallable. I've tried the herd bull challenge, I've tried all the things where you know you get in like 30 yards and you just bugle right in their face. And I would say 95% of the time they've gotten up, they've grabbed their cows and they just run and leave. They don't want to fight. They just want to like get out of there. So for me, I've instead spent my efforts, instead of trying to learn how to call, I've tried to just get into their into their little honey holes and, and try to cut them off or like get into their bedding zones and just try to get shots off um, as they're, they're moving between their, their feeding and their bedding area. But for my seventh archery bull, I um, actually implemented a bit of calling. So I glassed up this bull and a bunch of cows and the big old raspy bugle. So, so the elk was on the other side of this like 200 yard long meadow. And so, so I pushed up to the edge of the meadow and he was back in the timber just a little bit. So I get to the edge of the meadow. I let out like two little cow calls and I actually cow call with my lips. So I just went like this. I was like, I did that exact call. He bugles. I instantly cow call twice back in a little more of an excited tone. He bugles again. I dropped my backpack. I ran as fast as I possibly could across the 200 yards. Probably did it in like 25 seconds. Not really. <laughs> Not much of a sprinter, but I got across there really quick and the bull pops out and he's looking across this huge meadow. He's like, where's these cows that I just heard? And at this time I like knock an arrow and I come up, draw my bow. I'm shooting this release. Hold on him. I'm, my pin is on him and I'm just, I'm sitting here. I'm press, pressuring the release and I'm like, Anytime now, anytime, punk, it goes, hit him, dang, you're perfect. He ran about 100 yards. I, he, he didn't expire uh, right then, so I slipped in and I shot him again at 20 and he expired. Um, that's the only time I've ever killed an elk by calling. In that situation, it worked awesome. And I think for all calling when you are by yourself, I think the best tactic, you never call and then just sit there. You always call and then you move. So like if you know the elk are over there, you're gonna call back here and then you're gonna cut the distance in half because if that elk wants to come in and investigate, it's not gonna come all the way to where the sound was, it's gonna come in to a certain point and then hang up. And you wanna be somewhere where he's gonna hang up and so that you know he'll be in range. It is always such a roller coaster. <laughs> Ended up putting a pretty good shot on this guy right at 40 yards. And the best part was is that I executed the shot as best I could. There was no target panic. It was just pull, 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 release. Our tree bowl down. <laughs> so for that hunt, it was a solo hunt. And one thing I've started doing on basically all my solo hunts, especially elk hunts, deer I can usually manage pretty well by myself. Uh, but elk, when you pull a quarter off or when you de start deboning an animal, I mean, there's so much meat on those suckers so heavy it's it's so hard not to just like drop drop meat in the dirt or like pick up a huge quarter or just go like flop it in the grass or in the dirt i i process all my own game animals been doing it for years i just i love the i love the process itself i everything's way cleaner uh, you know i love i also love being the only person that touches that meat but what i did on this hunt it was the first time i ever did it was i brought a little uh it was actually a little dyneema tarp from i think z packs like a little eight by 10 super ultralight tarp. But I laid the tarp out right next to the elk. And when I started um, to debone and pull meat off, I would just like, I'd pull a quarter off and I would just lay it on that tarp. But what the tarp allowed me to do is have a basically a, a perfectly clean um, work area, workstation if you may, to, to, to lay out all this meat, debone it, pull the hide off. It was the cleanest butcher job I think I've ever done. So moving forward on all my backcountry hunts, it will absolutely be bringing that little tarp uh, for that reason. And for my eighth and most recent archery bull, I hunted 17 days for this bull. I hunted a bunch of days out of a tree stand actually, which was pretty unique, pretty awesome. I had some, some actually really, really great encounters.
But on my 17th day, it was, my, it was actually my last day, uh, my last opportunity to hunt. A couple days prior, I'd actually seen this bull, and he was, he was the biggest bull around. And I was like, wow, if I, could get an, if I could get a chance at that thing, it'd be so cool. And I'm not that picky of an elk hunter, but you know, you're always trying to kill the biggest bull in, in the bunch. Like that's totally natural. <laughs> so up until this point, I'd been hunting pretty cautiously. I didn't want to pressure these elk too much. You know, I wanted to capitalize on, on one opportunity and not, basically I didn't want to bump the elk all out of the country. On my last evening, on my last day of my season, I was like, time to get aggressive. This big bull, he pops out and he's got a bunch of cows and the, I mean, the whole woods are just erupting with bulls bugling and cows and there, there was just elk funneling all over the place. This bull, he's moving up this, this wide open little chunk of, chunk of meadow and I'm like, ah, oh, there, there's no way. But, but right, right in the middle of this meadow, there's this one tiny little draw that maybe like drops probably three feet. And I was like, if I get right in that draw and just stay as low as I possibly can, I could just motor right up. It was honestly a total Hail Mary, but it was my last day of the season. So I had to make something happen. So I'm motoring up this this little draw basically belly crawling slash running while staying super low and i get to probably like 150 yards of this bull and his cows kind of were kind of working towards me and one of his cows sees me and so i'm just i'm just basically kneeling there with with an arrow knocked just kind of like dang like this is as far as i've gotten next thing i know this satellite bull little little five point he's like walking right at me and he sees me and then all of a sudden he starts to loop down. He's trying to get downwind of me to smell me because he like sees this thing. And he's like, I don't know what that is, but it doesn't, something doesn't look right. So he's, he's coming downwind. And then I look up and I hear a bugle and here comes this big bull. And he's running right at this satellite bull trying to chase him off. So this bull comes waltzing in. I range really quick. It says 50. And I'm like, 50? So I range again, 50. And I was like, I got a pin for that. <laughs> That's kind of my max, but I was like, I can shoot very effectively at 50 yards. So I draw my bow, the bull sees me draw, but he, he's just kind of like, he's so fired up from the rut. He just sits there, stands there broadside. And he's just looking at me like, what is that? With this release, I come to full draw, put my pin on him. I'm just sitting here, pull, pull. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself like any day now, any day now, and then tunk. Another thing I've been doing this year is I started shooting lighted knocks from Nocturnal. They are absolutely amazing. From a hunting standpoint, they allow you to see your arrow and see your shot placement, which is the most telling thing possible in archery. You know, sometimes, especially in low light, you don't know if you hit the animal. You can tell by sound often if you hit them, but you can't see your arrow. You know, it's really hard to find your arrow after it goes zinging into the dirt. Anyway, so I'm shooting a blue lighted knock. The arrow goes and I just watch this blue laser beam just go kind of arc up a little bit and come down and just go right behind the shoulder. The bull lurches forward, he runs, and in 10 seconds I watch that thing running and he just stands and he tips over and is dead. The really cool thing on that hunt, there was a lot of cool things on that hunt, but my girlfriend was right behind me. She was like maybe 200 yards uh, behind me in a kind of, kind of in that little draw. She saw the whole thing go down and then uh, I was able to get in touch with my dad via my satellite texting device, the Zolio, and um, he hiked in there and came and helped help that evening. So fun, fun to fun to share those those memories and those moments with people that are special in your life. For my eighth archery bowl, I finally feel like everything really came together, and I, I feel pretty confident going into seasons moving forward. Primarily with my shooting ability, my lack of target panic, which I never thought I'd say. Zero plans on changing from this release. Again, it's a Sweet Spot Ultra 3 from Trueball. It's a hinge with the safety. I hope there was some valuable pieces of wisdom in here from my uh, many years of bow hunt and elk. There is no better time than the present to be prepping for archery season. That's a wrap on this vlog, a little long-winded. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something. Hit the like button if you liked it. Subscribe to see more. Comment below, we'll see you next time.